Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, how to age pu'er cakes. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining the basic factors for you to get the best out of aging your pu'er. This video is gonna go into the Tea Masterclasses playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then go click that button. So some of you may have Pua cakes, maybe you are interested in buying Pua cakes, and I thought it would be useful to go through some of the factors that you need to consider if you're considering aging your Pua. So let's first talk about what it is about Pua that makes it suitable for aging. The process to make Pua keeps the tea alive. What I mean by that is in the tea leaf, in all tea leaves, there are enzymes that catalyze the oxidation process. And in most tea types, what they do is they stop the oxidation process by halting the enzymatic process. So they basically deactivate the enzymes and they do that by heating and by drying. But with pu'er, what they do is they heat it at a lower temperature. So just over 120, 130 degrees Celsius compared to say an oolong tea that would be heated well above 250 degrees Celsius. So they reduce the temperature, and that means that instead of deactivating the enzyme completely, they slow it down to a crawl. Then they sun dry the tea. This is a really important step of pu'er making. Most teas go through a kind of industrial heating racks that heat the, that heat the leaf up and dehydrate the leaf. But with a pu'er tea, they sun dry it so that tea leaves still have a little bit of moisture in, again, keeping the tea alive. And then when they compress it into cakes, they steam the leaf to soften it, to make it into a cake. So they're locking in moisture. That means that inside the cakes, there is moisture that allows the tea to age over time. And so this enzymatic process, coupled with a fermentation process that comes from picking tea leaves in a relatively wild ecosystem with lots of microorganisms floating around mean that the, the tea will start to darken, the flavor will change and the effects will change. So I wanted to go through the key factors of what makes the poor age and factors that you can control. So first of all, with raw poor tea, I always recommend that you drink the poor tea fresh within the first two years of picking, or you wait past six, seven years, because the period between two and seven is kind of an in-between. It's neither here nor there. It's too mature for a young, fresh pu'er, and it's too young for an aged pu'er. But the aging process usually takes between 10 to 20 years. 20 years, you're starting to approach properly matured, properly fully aged pu'er, but really you can go 30, even 40 years. A lot of people consider 40 year to be the kind of pinnacle of pu'er um, aging. But it also depends on how fast it's aging. And generally it's considered that the slower you age a tea, whilst keeping it alive, whilst keeping the, the leaf uh, active, but aging slowly produces a better aged tea rather than rushing the aging process. However, I am not a very patient person. <laughs> and judging by the fact that you're talking 20, 30 years to age a poor cake, I don't know how many poor cakes we're all gonna age in our lifetime. So I'm more of the opinion and slant that we push the aging process a little bit harder so that we can enjoy the tea rather than just passing it on as an heirloom. Okay, so let's talk about the factors. The first factor is temperature. So temperature is really important. You don't want it to be too hot. You don't want it to be too cold. Something around room temperature, so 20 to 30 degrees Celsius um, is about the right uh, temperature for uh, maturing and aging poor. For the American viewers, I'll put the Fahrenheit uh, uh, for temperature in the comments, in the description se section below. Okay, so temperature around room temperature. The next is humidity, really important. Now there is wet storage and dry storage. You'll hear people talk about whether or not wet storage is better than dry storage. Dry storage, so if you, uh, if you store the tea in a drier humidity, so around say 40 to 50 uh, percent humidity, then it will age slower. Um, wet storage is kind of 60, 70 percent, 70 percent 
or maybe even slightly higher uh, humidity, that will age the tea quicker. Some people buy humidors that you uh, normally would use for cigars that normally keep the humidity at around 65 and they store their pua cakes in humidors. That's something that you can do if you feel that your natural humidity isn't right. But between 50 and 70 is a good window for aging. The next thing is air. It's important that you uh, make sure that there's enough oxygen for the oxidation process to happen. But you don't want too much circulation of air that it dries the cake out. So what um, I recommend is that you keep the cakes um, in a relatively uh, closed off environment, but at least once a year, you open uh, the area where you're storing the cake and let a good amount of fresh air in so that you've got oxygen to replenish the uh, oxidation process. The next is light. Light is very important. Keep it out of light. Darker is always better. Uh, the next factor is aroma. These teas will soak up aroma. Um, and so you want to make sure that you keep the teas out of kitchen smells or any strong smells. You want to keep it in an environment where it's not gonna pick up too much aroma. You'll also find that it will change throughout the year. So you may taste an aging pua in springtime and it will taste different to autumn time because it's reacting to the environment constantly and reacting to aromas that are in the air too. And finally, how you store the tea. This is really key. You want to make sure that you're not storing the tea um, in an environment that is non-porous. So that's why all pua cakes are stored, uh, are wrapped in paper. But if you started wrapping that into, a, sealing it into a plastic bag, then you're going to, again, stop this aging process and actually uh, prevent the, the tea from staying alive. So you want to make sure that you keep it um, in an environment and wrap it up um, in porous, um, materials. I like to use cardboard boxes, just simple cardboard boxes are great uh, and they actually speed up the aging process. If you want, some people like to uh, break down the cake and put it into um, unglazed pots, clay pots um, and uh, containers like that. That will be a slightly slower aging process if you want to age your tea at a slower um, pace. So those are the main factors that affect poor aging. I've just got some teas here and I want to give you some examples of the aging process as they're happening. So this tea here is a 2015. So this is, uh, I'm speaking to you from 2016. So this is 2015. This is a year old. Um, so this has been aging for a year. Let me see if I can focus on that. There you go. Um, and you can see that it's uh, still got some green hues to it. Um, the, the buds are, have still got a, a lightness to them. Right, now I'm gonna put it next to a 2006. So this is 10 years old. Let me just do this. So this is a 10 years old. Now it's not the same tea, it's not the same mountain, so there will always be natural variations anyway. But you can see here that the 10 year old tea um, is noticeably darker and has aged um, and um, is well on its way to becoming a nice aged tea. And you can see that I've resisted um, breaking into this one and tasting it. So this is 10 years old. And my oldest tea here, let me just make sure I'm in focus. My oldest tea here is um, this one here. This is from 2000 and three, so this is 13 years old. So not a huge amount of difference, but let me quickly show you. So this is the 10 years and, oh sorry, this is the 13 years and this is the 10 years. So again, a slight difference, not a huge amount, but a slight difference. This has got more of those kind of um, autumnal colors uh, slightly darker, um, slightly more kind of uh, uh, oranges and browns. So those are my cakes. Here are lots of other cakes and we have others in the office 
and uh, in our warehouse. Um, and they're all aging differently. But what I like to do also is to break the cakes up. So if I want to age a tea a little bit quicker, then what I'll do is I'll actually completely deconstruct the cake. Um, what I do, here's an example. So this is a 2015 um, tea. This is a um, tea we picked up from Yunnan last year. This is a Shengcha from Jingmai Mountain. This is 1,000 year old tea trees. So ancient arbor, Gushu, really, really lovely, lovely tea. I've only got a small amount left. This bag was full before. Um, and we've been uh, drinking it and enjoying it while it's fresh. Now it's approaching the time where I would stop drinking this because it's um, about a year, a year and a half, it's a, just over a year old and I would like to age this. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just going to be storing in simple brown bags. Make sure you always label your tea so you know what, you, what you've got, make sure it's always in there. Um, so I'll be transferring the loose tea into a simple brown paper bag, wrapping it up and storing it. One thing I forgot to mention is that Pua tea likes to be stored together. So keep the tea cakes together, you know, quite tightly packed. Again, not too much air circulation, just a little bit, but not too much air circulation. Otherwise, it will dry the tea out. But if you keep them together, we find that, the, that there's a more uh, even humidity and the, the, the tea cakes actually kind of breathe uh, into each other and it's a really uh, much nicer way of storing. So taking a cardboard box, stacking up your uh, tea cakes nicely together and storing them away in a dark place with the right temperature and the right humidity. Okay, I hope that that helps anybody out there who's interested in poor aging uh, to get the first step in understanding some of the factors involved. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you'd like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come and visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don May from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from the tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.